Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Mars. Well, not just, the whole planet. We're going to be talking about that one specific mission that we haven't discussed in a very long time. The Chinese Tianwen-1 mission, and specifically the Zhurong rover that you see right here. With the main question being, what exactly happened to it? Why is it that we haven't heard about it in a very long time? And why has China not really posted anything about it in the last few months? Especially because some of the recent photos from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that you see right here, the spacecraft operated around Mars by NASA, has actually released some of the new pictures showing us exactly where this rover is located. You can sort of see it as a tiny green blob very close to that crater. And these pictures taken between 2022 and 2023 show us that the rover hasn't really moved at all in the last few months. Which I guess raises the question, did it break down? Did something happen to it? And so in this video I wanted to discuss some of the things that we've learned from this rover in the last year and a half, but more importantly talk a little bit more about the science behind this, but also discuss some of the cool design features of this rover that were supposed to prevent whatever happened here, or here, wherever the rover is. But let's start with a very brief review of what this mission was. Especially if you don't want to watch that video that reviews all of this, that should be in the description below. The video that talks more about this mission itself. So anyway, this was part of the Tianwen-1 mission, the first Chinese mission to Mars. And technically the Chinese third rover ever, following the successful rovers on the moon, specifically the U-2 rovers you see right here. Which, as I mentioned in some of the previous videos, kind of allows us to relive and re-experience some of the excitements from the 70s and the 80s when the American and the Soviet space programs were pretty much doing the same, landing on the moon and then trying to land on Mars. But for China they obviously learned from all of the failures of the other programs and were able to successfully land the Martian rover on the first try, using a descent module reminiscent of some of the earlier NASA missions with a relatively similar profile to the NASA's Mars Pathfinder, the rover that landed back in 1997. And the success in this case made China the third ever country to successfully soft land on the surface of Mars, but only the second country after the US to successfully operate something for a pretty long time. I've actually discussed the curse of Mars for the Soviet program that has never succeeded to operate anything here despite multiple launches in the past. And interestingly, one of the first things that the rover did once it descended from the landing platform was actually take this really really cool selfie. And it did so by placing a remote camera on the ground that then was able to communicate via Wi-Fi and send the pictures back to the rover then relaying it to the orbiter above Mars. So somewhere out there on the surface of Mars there's literally a Chinese remotely operated Wi-Fi camera that's by now probably all covered in dust but was able to take a really cool selfie. And its original mission was only supposed to last for three months. So following its descent on May 15th of 2021, by mid-June it was supposed to finish its mission. But just like with NASA rovers, it was able to continuously extend its program and the engineers from China were able to extend the mission much much longer. As a matter of fact, over the past two years it was able to travel approximately two kilometers across the Martian surface, surviving way longer and producing way more data than anyone ever expected. And because it did possess quite a lot of different instruments, including a ground penetrating radar able to see approximately 100 meters into the depth of Mars, in the process the rover also made some really cool discoveries about the red planet. For example, one of the biggest discoveries in the last couple of years was definitive evidence for really large floods that happened on the planet several billion years ago. And specifically it discovered both hydrated minerals, very likely created by ancient water on Mars, but was also able to use its radar to see deep into the ground, discovering two horizontal layers at a depth of about 20 meters and about 30 to 80 meters. With the larger rocks 30 to 80 meters deep showing previous interaction with ancient water suggesting some kind of an ancient flood. And then detecting something very similar but at a much smaller scale, approximately 10 to 30 meters deep, implying that this happened again a few billion years later. With the main implication being that long time ago, probably about 3 billion years ago, there was a huge flood on Mars, specifically in the region known as the Utopia Planitia. The region that's mostly to the north of Mars and is generally much lower and also much younger than a lot of other surface on the planet. It's also very close to where the current Perseverance rover is, but not exactly in the same location. But because of that detection at 20 meters deep, it suggested that the flood happened again about 1.5 billion years ago but was also probably mixed with a lot of glacial activity happening at the same time. Which means that Mars definitely went through several periods 
where the liquid water could have existed on the surface, but it might have existed for different reasons. For example, some of it was probably created as a result of some kind of a volcanic activity, and some of it might have been a result of a huge asteroid collision sometime in the past. And we've actually discussed some of the tsunamis that were detected that were produced by some of these asteroids in some of the videos you can find in the description below. Either way, the fact that this rover was able to discover all of the signs of liquid water that existed in this area at least twice was actually a pretty big discovery. And a discovery that nobody expected the rover to make because its mission was only supposed to last for three months. And so a lot of international scientists, especially ESA scientists, were super intrigued to collaborate more with China and wanted this mission to continue so that they can actually learn more about Mars. Especially because the European mission that was supposed to land here a couple of years ago failed crashing on the surface. But Mars is not Earth. And the conditions here are very different from what anyone can plan for or what anyone can currently anticipate. And so even though China has extensively tested its rover and designed it specifically to withstand Martian nights and, of course, Martian dust storms, as this image here shows us, something happened to the rover and it might have actually finished its mission for one reason or another. But here it's worth mentioning the research that China put into this, even designing a specifically shaped type of solar panels in order to avoid Martian storms from affecting them as much. Here are actually some of the earlier designs trying to figure out what shape would be the best in order for the Martian dust not to get stuck on the panels and in order for it to be shaken off much easier. They eventually settled for the design that's a little bit more angled and covered with anti-dust coating that was supposed to prevent the dust from accumulating and the solar panels from failing. Which was of course the main reason for the failure of the Mars Inside mission just a few months ago and the Mars Opportunity rover back in 2018. In other words, solar panels on Mars have a very, very short lifespan because dust seemed to stick to them really well. And even though China thought that maybe some kind of anti-dust coating might help, in reality, a lot of this is probably due to static electricity. Because Martian air is so dry, a lot of dust motion across the surface tends to create huge amounts of static. Previous studies have even suggested that it might be impossible to, for example, fly helicopters on Mars because the blades will suddenly experience huge shocks from all of this accumulated static. Now the static still affects the blades, but turns out the blades survive just fine. But when it comes to the solar panels, it tends to stick to them almost permanently, and it becomes extremely difficult to remove it because of the static. As a matter of fact, for the inside mission, the engineers were able to successfully remove some of this dust only twice. First time by literally trying to put more dust on the panels, spraying just a little bit on the surface, and second time when completely by accident a dust devil dislodged some of the dust from the surface by creating a miniature tornado right above the panels. But for this to happen you have to get super super lucky. And even though it did happen, the inside rover eventually just lost all of its power and the mission had to be shut down a few months ago. And right now that's what everyone believes happened to the Zhurong rover as well. Because the recent dust storm was pretty heavy and once again affected quite a lot of equipment on Mars, despite the earlier Chinese preparations, where they essentially shut down all of the non-essential instruments, only leaving the essential instruments functioning, it appears that the rover might have shut down after all, because it hasn't moved in the last few months and so far China has not really reported anything. And that's because it was supposed to come out of its hibernation and start reporting new data last month. Although it could still maybe wake up in the next few months as the temperature on Mars goes up and provides just enough temperature to charge some of its batteries, which might have died because of the cold. And so if it does come back to life, it would be a huge achievement for the Chinese space agency, but more importantly, potentially present us with a really good opportunity for how future missions like this could be launched in order to avoid Martian dust storms. Because there's actually something else that China did to this rover to make it potentially survive a little bit longer. And it's something that's kind of intriguing and kind of, I guess, a little bit strange. Somewhere underneath the solar panels and much closer to the center of the rover, the agency attached 10 containers with something known as an undecane, which is a type of a chemical that you can technically find on Earth and is also what's known as an alkane hydrocarbon, but is also apparently a mild sex attractant for various cockroaches and moths. So yeah, if there are any cockroaches on Mars, they're probably really excited to see that rover. But one of the reasons they actually use this particular compound on the rover is because when it solidifies or when it freezes into ice, it starts to release a relatively large amount of heat. And it does so around the same temperature as the night temperature on Mars which essentially means that during nighttime or during the colder periods, 
This particular compound is used to keep batteries and a lot of other important elements much warmer than they would be otherwise, allowing them to survive the Martian night. And then during Martian daytime, it melts, collecting the heat from the sun, which basically means that this cycle can be repeated every single Martian day. And so this is a pretty interesting way of keeping this particular rover warm even at night. And of course, also means that through these chemical reactions inside the N undecaying containers, at some point the batteries might warm up just enough to allow the rover to come back to life. And so a lot of researchers, even Western researchers, are secretly really hoping that it is going to come back to life because of all of the incredible discoveries it made so far. And if it does come to life, it means that their strategy of using an undecaying, or let's just call it what it is, the cockroach sex hormone, mixed with the technique that used the angled solar panels covered in very specific anti-dust compound, might actually be a viable strategy for all of the future missions involving solar panels on Mars. But because we haven't heard anything just yet, at the moment nobody really knows what really happened. As a matter of fact, even Chinese researchers are a little bit confused and a little bit surprised by the fact that there's no official announcement just yet. So chances are that the Chinese engineers are still trying to figure out if the rover is functioning or if it failed completely, but we're probably not going to know details just yet. If it does come back to life though, there are already several different locations the scientists are hoping to visit, including a nearby intriguing crater, but also an intriguing location that might have been some kind of a mud volcano billions of years ago. But I guess until we hear from the official sources, it's going to stay a mystery for now. On that note, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic, subscribe, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.